the Apple Watch Series 6 was released just less than six months ago now, and I thought it a good time to revisit Apple's best smartwatch yet and do an updated review. So let's check out the Apple Watch Series 6 in 2021 and see if it's still worth your hard earned cash. Stay tuned. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to Tech It Easy. So the Apple Watch Series 6. Now, there's many reasons why I believe the Apple Watch Series 6 was Apple's best smartwatch yet. And it may have even taken the crown for the best smartwatch of 2020. And believe me, that's tough to say coming from a Samsung fanboy. First, let's take a look at the UI. So it's running on Apple's watchOS 7, and there's a lot to love about it, and a few things I'm not too keen on. Most importantly though, the watch is super smooth, lagging or stuttering isn't something I've noticed a single time in the six months of using it. And honestly, it's a really pleasant, stress-free experience, almost. So bearing in mind that I daily drive a Samsung phone and a Galaxy Watch 3, I found the app tray to be a little bit difficult, especially for first time users. Don't get me wrong, it looks and feels amazing. The haptic feedback you get when zooming in and out feels awesome. But for someone who might be new to Apple or not quite so tech savvy, it's a lot. You have all these different icons which are pretty tiny and all over the place. And I'm not going to lie, I don't think they're quite as clear as they could be. I know when I started using it, it took me a good while to figure out which app was which. Really, this is the only hugely negative thing I have to say about the Apple Watch Series 6, but I do think simplicity would be a welcome factor into their next version of the UI. For example, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 has the app wheel, which tells you clearly which app is which. Admittedly, it doesn't look nearly as nice as the Apple Watch Series 6, but it is a lot more practical. Now, you can change the menu on the Apple Watch Series 6 to a list view, which will display the names, but that, in my opinion, doesn't work as well, and it looks worse than the Galaxy Watch UI. One thing that does look absolutely awesome in the Apple Watch Series 6 is the watch faces. They're absolutely stunning and really what make the screen pop. They're also extremely customizable, so you can get really creative with them. No, it doesn't have the choice of third-party watch faces like the Galaxy Watch 3 does, which bothered me at first, but then again, the Galaxy Watch doesn't have the insane customizable watch faces the Apple Watch ships with, so it's a fair trade-off really. So let's get on to some more of the goodies. So this time round, the Apple Watch Series 6 has a brighter screen and always on display, which is a welcomed upgrade in my opinion. Considering these devices are gonna be used for fitness outside mainly, it's important that you're able to see the screen in direct sunlight. Another thing which is brilliant is the fast charging. You can charge this up fully in just 90 minutes, which does balance itself out a bit considering it does only have a mere 18 hours of battery life. Which yeah, isn't great, but it is enough to get you through the day with ease. Popping it on charge whilst you're in the shower or having your dinner will mean you can make the most of all those tracking features. And I suppose we should go through what those tracking features actually are. So thanks to Watch OS 7, you can now track your sleep, SPO2, heart rate, steps, and more. There's even an automatic hand wash timer which starts whenever the Apple Watch Series 6 detects you started washing your hands. Something that Samsung appear to have stolen. Whoops. Now, if you're wondering about the accuracy of the Apple Watch Series 6, when it comes down to SPO2 and heart rate tracking, I recently did a test putting it against a medical grade device and comparing it to the Galaxy Watch 3. And honestly, the results were favorable towards the Apple Watch Series 6. I was really impressed with how it performed. If you do want to check out that video, I will put a link down in the comment section. So what else can the Apple Watch Series 6 do? Well, you can make and receive calls, get texts through and even receive emails with both the LTE and the GPS versions. The LTE version will let you make and receive calls and more, even when away from the phone, whilst the GPS version will only have that feature available when you're in range of your smartphone. In the six months of usage, I found this to work fine. I have the GPS version here, and surprisingly, I use it to make calls a lot. I'm extremely busy all the time, and it just allows me to continue doing what I'm doing. I have no difficulty hearing anyone and haven't had any complaints about being able to hear me. So the Apple Watch Series 6 seems to be great in that department. Now, maybe I've convinced you to take the plunge and go for it, but which model should you go for? If you're not particularly tech savvy, 
you might be looking at all the various different models with a confused face. So let's start with the cheapest option, the Apple Watch SE. Whilst not technically part of the Apple Watch Series 6 family, it was released around the same time and will likely be an option many of you are considering. So what's the difference between the Apple Watch Series 6 and the SE version? Well, first and foremost, you can wave goodbye to SPO2 monitoring on the SE version. The SE version also uses the S5 system, whilst the Series 6 uses the S6, which is a fair bit faster. That being said, the S5 system is still twice as fast as the 2017 Apple Watch Series 3 watch, so not slow by any means. One other feature you'll miss out on is the ECG feature. That's exclusively on the Apple Watch Series 6, so the SE is really your budget option here. Still absolutely fine in my opinion though. If you're relatively healthy anyway, you most likely won't use the ECG feature, but you may miss the SPO2 monitoring feature if I'm honest. But yes, the Apple Watch SE does have the green like for me in 2021. Now we have the GPS and the GPS plus LTE models. So the models with LTE at the end mean they can be used on their own as a cellular device. As I mentioned earlier, allowing you to make and receive calls without the need for your smartphone around. These are typically more expensive though, so really think about whether this is a feature you're really going to need. GPS version can still make and receive calls, but you must be near your phone. Lastly, there is just the size, which is pretty obvious, but if you do opt for the larger version, there will be another price increase. Personally, I think most of you will be fine with the smaller version and I'd honestly just go for the GPS version. Most of us have our phones on us all the time anyway, so it wouldn't make much of a difference. People who might want to opt for the larger 44 mm version and the LTE version are those of you who like your sport, so cycling and running and doing a lot of things when you're quite far away from the house and don't really want to lug your phone around with you. So yeah, that was a quick revisit and buying guide, I guess, for the Apple Watch Series 6 in 2021. One last note, I do expect there to be a newer model later on in the year, the Apple Watch Series 7. However, with the feature set on the Apple Watch Series 6, I can't see it becoming useless anytime soon. So I wouldn't let that stop you from buying one. If you did want to wait until September time for the newer model, make sure you still consider the Apple Watch Series 6 as the price will most likely drop a little, making it an even more excellent value buy. If you do want to check the prices, there will be links down in the description for a few different countries. Anyway guys, let me know down in the comment section your thoughts on the Apple Watch Series 6 in 2021. And if there's anything else I can help you with, I'll try and do my best. But for now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.